Welcome to Pigeon River Farm, doing farming right. I'm Robert Brown, the owner of Pigeon River Farm. Thank you for viewing. Good evening. In tonight's episode, we're going to discuss soy that's utilized for cattle feed. Uh, soy has been utilized to fatten up cattle or increase milk production uh, for quite some time. And I am kind of uh, have a real difference of opinion on that than, uh, than the mainstay, the mainstay uh, industry. Uh, my concern is the sheer amount of genetically modified soybean that's out there. Uh, approximately 93% of all the soybean grown in the United States is genetically modified. And if you think about the dynamics behind that, you have a lot of factors here that kick in. One is going to be the amount of glyphosate that's used. Uh, the, the pounds that are used every year stockpile since the 1990s on these fields that are getting a corn bean rotation. And so we're toxifying the soil. We have plants now that are higher in, in estrogen uh, just by the genetic modification that has uh, occurred. And additionally, the buildup of the glyphosate in the soil has contaminated the soil. The soil is going to be kind of ruined for, uh, for a significant period of time. The rule I've always been told and I've witnessed myself on fields that glyphosate lingers for up to 10 years uh, before the compounds completely broke down. And that was based on a relatively small level of treatment. We have this accumulative treatment of glyphosate, it's a real problem. So the soybean, let's get back to the soybean. The soybean itself uh, is always viewed as a health food. It was uh, originated out of Japan. It's an unbelievably healthy product. So why am I slamming it? Because it's overutilized. It's used in every, literally every food sort we have as both a protein source and as a binder. And when you think you're trying to give this to, to ruminant animals, to cattle that have multiple stomachs, that were never intended to eat grains, let alone put on a high protein diet with like soybean. The soybean being up to 40% uh, protein per volume. It's incredibly the most efficient, uh, but definitely one of the most efficient crops out there with protein. But the cattle don't need that level of protein unless you want to artificially get them to grow. And that's an area that has to be addressed. Um, when we try, buy hamburger you know when you go out to buy hamburger you find that um, yeah it's a good price but it's because we're able to so efficiently raise corn and soybean this in turn has produced the meat of less integrity so you gotta think about integrity of the product itself if you have meat that has low integrity what does that mean that means you're bringing a lot of chemicals you're bringing a lot of hormones that you shouldn't be consuming and unfortunately, meat has got a bad rap, and we don't want that. We, we here at Pigeon River Farm go out of our way, whether grass-fed, we're grass-fed certified, we do everything our cattle have never had and never will have any grains, uh, specifically to a soybean. Um, so that's an area that when you make a purchase, when you're purchasing uh, um, meat, pro any of the protein sources, uh, not sure sorry, have to be a, a beef, <clears throat> it could be pork, it could be chicken, you got to think about there again the, the quantity of soybean that's in it and what kind of effect that's going to have on the human health. If it was just a little bit and it was a, and it was genetic non-genetically modified and organic soybean, I maybe would not have quite the argument with it because again the whole science behind genetic modification is that we're inserting genes into that crop into that into the seed. And we're growing something that's altered. God never made it, man. It's a man-made creature. I don't know, I'll try to find the right words for that, but it is something that has been altered severely. And you got to think about it. In the, now the cattle trying to absorb that into their feed, and that is really kind of a miserable way of existence for the animal. It makes them unhealthy. It doesn't make them healthier. It makes them unhealthy. Uh, the ruminant can't work as it's supposed to. Multi-stomach. The the microorganisms in their stomachs can't function properly. So overall, I, the soybeans on my bad list. We don't use it in our poultry feed. We've never fed any of our cattle any type of grain. 
So soybeans off the list. So I'm an official soybean hater, even though that it's growing all around me. I'm happy for the farmers that make some money, but it's still not uh, a, an adequate diet for our cattle. So I thank you very much and have a most wonderful evening.